The Apostle of Shadow build is going to be a level 150 Faith build that's going to utilize two Urge Steel daggers in order to take your enemies down quickly. I have found that when using daggers in previous builds, one of the bigger problems is you take a ton of damage while you're doing damage yourself, and I've corrected that with this build, so let's get into it. So in this build, the name of the game is Damage Negation. You want to take as little damage as possible while pouring out as much as you possibly can. So in doing that, I've put together some talismans and some incantations that are going to help us take a lot less damage than typical dagger builds normally do because as you guys know dagger builds require you to be so close to your enemy your hitboxes can be a little bit wonky so you are going to take damage no matter how good you are at the game with this build i'm going to mitigate that so let's start with how we take the least amount of damage we're going to be using two buff incantations here and they're going to give us a solid portion of damage negation for our build the first of which is going to be black flames protection and the second is going to be golden vow both of these are going to stack giving us around 40 5% damage negation, and with one of our talismans, that's going to go up even higher. But we'll get into the talismans in just a second. So let's talk about the weapons. You can actually get two Urge Steel Daggers in your first playthrough. The first is going to be given by Kenneth Height as soon as you complete the first portion of his quest line in Limgrave, and the second one is going to be found a little bit later in the Royal Capital, Lindell. You can find it right off of the Avenue Balcony side of Grace, and it's going to be by a broken statue sitting on a corpse. This dagger is going to have a E scaling in strength and E scaling in dex, but a B scaling in faith and considering we have our faith all the way up at 70 this is going to allow us to do a lot of damage with this weapon its physical attack power is 124 plus 140 and it also has holy attack power on it at 124 plus 140 as well i've also put the sacred blade ash of war on it just to give me a little bit of range and buff the weapon farther with holy damage but i've found the synergy between the ash of war and this weapon to be really really nice the attributes required to wield this weapon are 7 strength 12 dexterity and 14 faith so as stated before you can get it very early in the game in Limgrave, but this is definitely going to be a powerhouse of a dagger for you, especially when it comes to how much damage you can pull out of it. Now, as far as getting this build to work and synergize correctly, you are going to be using these four talismans, and you can swap out one depending on if you want to do more damage or if you want more quality of life with this build. The first talisman we are going to be using is the Viridian Amber Medallion plus one, which is going to give us a massive stamina boost. This particular talisman is going to increase our stamina by 13%, so it's a nice chunk to keep us rolling around and fighting and dodging without needing to stop and regroup our stamina. If you do find yourself not necessarily needing a stamina talisman, but want to do a little more damage and you have it, use the Milson's Prosthesis here as well, because that's going to stack extraordinarily well with our number two talisman, the Rotwing Sword Insignia. This is going to greatly raise the attack power with successive attacks, and it's going to give you a 13% attack power boost when all is said and done, and because we have daggers, we are going to be attacking extraordinarily fast, getting that attack power boost very, very quickly. In talisman slot number three, I am using a quality of life talisman here, the Erd Tree's Favor plus two, which is going to raise our maximum HP, stamina, and equip load. For this particular Erd Tree Talisman, you are going to get a 4% increase in your HP, a 10% increase in stamina, and an 8% gain to your equip load. Like I said, great quality of life Talisman. It does a lot for us, and it allows us to have some extra health when we do take some of that damage. And finally, the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman is going to be in our fourth slot, and this is going to enormously boost your physical damage negation by 20%. So, I believe this is true, but let me know down in the comments if it's not. This is going to stack on top of Black Flame Protection and Golden Vow, allowing us to have a ton of damage negation. And as you can see here in all the clips that you've seen so far, even though I'm getting hit, I'm really not taking that much damage, and it's allowing me to stay in the fight for longer without healing. Now, if you want to find these talismans for yourself, the Viridian Amber Medallion is going to be located in Weeping Peninsula in the Tomb Sword Catacombs Dungeon. The Rottenwing Sword Insignia is going to be a quest reward at the end of Milson's quest line, which I'll leave a link to the video in the description down below. The Erd Tree's Favor Plus 2 is going to be located in Lindell Ashen Capital at the very end of the game, surrounded by three putrid tree avatars. And the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman is going to be found in Ephriel Brace of the Halig Tree, inside of a broken church, inside of a chest, surrounded by a bunch of pest enemies. Now, per usual, guys, I just want to take a moment here and thank you guys so much for watching this far into the video. If you have not subscribed yet and you're enjoying the content, feel free to hit that sub button and the bell notifications just so you can know when I'm making more videos. It does help me out a lot. We just passed 12 and a half thousand subscribers on YouTube in this year, so I'm super excited about that. Big thank you to all of you guys who have been supporting what I'm doing from everything from the Elden Bling all the way into these videos. I appreciate it. It's been super fun to make videos for you guys. So with that said, thank you so much. 
hit that sub button, and let's get into the flask. Now, as far as our flask of wonder is physic, we are going to be using the holy shrouding crack tier and the green burst crystal tier, the holy tier, because we are looking to boost that damage by a solid 20% when it comes to our holy attacks, and the green burst crystal tier, because every time you use daggers, you're going to be looking for more and more of that stamina. This is one of those tiers that you can switch out if you would like to, possibly putting the faith tier in there, or maybe the opaline bubble tier if you want to take even less damage, but these are the tiers that I've chosen, and I think they synergize really well with the build. The Holy Shrouding Crack tier is going to be located in the Urnia of the Lakes on the far west side where there's a Erd Tree. After you kill the Erd Tree, this is going to be one of your rewards. And the Green Burst Crystal tier is going to be actually found on the other side of the map in Kaled at the Minor Erd Tree next to the Smoldering Church. Now looking at the armor real quick, I wanted to put something on that looked pretty decent and also got us way over that 51 poise mark because as you know, the daggers cause us to take a lot more damage and we're getting staggered a lot. And if you're under the 51 poise mark, you would absolutely stand no chance. So we're going to be using the Royal Remains Helm, the Scaled Armor, the Bloodhound Knight Gauntlets, and the Scaled Greaves. All these can be found pretty easy within Elden Ring. Royal Remains Helm is going to be given to you after you defeat the Invader within Roundtable Hold. The Scaled Armor and the Scaled Greaves are going to be given to you from your second mission from Volcano Manor when you have to hunt down the Tarnished. And the Bloodhound Knight Gauntlets are going to be attained from the Gelmir Hero's Grave up in Mount Gelmir. All this is going to give you 64 poise, allowing you to be decently tanky, and with the damage negation we have, this works out really well. And guys, that is going to be it for the Apostle of Shadow build. Thank you so much for sticking with me to the end of the video. If you think of anything that could improve the build, or something you like or dislike, leave it down in the comments below. I always love interacting with you guys in the comments. It's a great way for us to build community here. And if you have not subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button and hit the bell notification so you can know when I'm making more content. I usually make videos Mondays and Fridays for you guys. So, with that being said, thank you so much once again, and until next time, stay safe, enjoy the game. I'll see you in the next one.